Hey guys, gonna do this video uh, early. It's midday. Uh, traded Sido, did a Sido long in the pre-market off the one minute twenty, and then a, a bid prop short. We've been seeing bid props um, on the backside, and also interesting enough, they did the same liquidity move here that NVFY did on Friday, where um, and I missed this. I should have, you know, I was anticipating it could happen, but I still didn't short it. Um, where they stacked some really thick ask here. And then on the third test, they came up the push. You know, it's very painted. It looks like it should at least rotate back above three. But they did the same thing where they had an ask at 296, 297, 298. Um, they filled a couple of them and then they pulled the rug. Um, but we got a nice little bit prop here. Um, I'll talk about that short later, but we'll focus on the pre-market long and what kind of made it a good pre-market long. So the most important factor is always volume. Volume is the most important factor in any trade, but especially when going long, um, you know, you look at volume first and then candlestick second, right? So this had like consistent 300, 400 K volume, you know, stock making new high, stock making new high, stock making new high, consistent and increasing volume. Those are all bullish factors. And then we got a very nice pattern where they simply pull it back super sharp um, to the one minute 20, which is right here. Um, and it was very clean. They just stacked a lot of bids and they did a signal that I like. I'll show it on the book where they put like an initial bid and then right before they initiate it, they stack a few more bids, right? So instead of one layer of bids, it's like three layers of bids. Um, and then it actually popped and came back to the one minute 20 which makes your risk really easy. So you're just risking the bids on the one minute 20, right? Um, it touched those bids, the bids held, and they had this aggressive initiation. Now, I usually like to take um, some profit just in case it's a long trap, right? Just in case they're making this aggressive move towards highs and they pull the stock, right? So it's usually a good idea to take some off just in case, especially with these aggressive pushes. Um, but the good news is they came with a ton of bids on this thing. So the one minute 20 actually caught up to the stock and they just started throwing bids, 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 um, which is great, which is exactly what you want to see. And I told my discord and a couple people on my discord along this with me that, um, that, you know, just given that this was the only thing really trading volume, Sido's a manipulated stock, it has a really good pattern that's shown to be really strong. Um, I was expecting him to attack $3 in high day, right? And the bid follow-up um, uh, was exactly what you want to see when you're long, right? It makes it a lot easier to hold. They gave a little fake $3 breakout here and pulled back. But as long as those bids holding, you know, I told my Discord, I'm just gonna assume this is fake resistance. Sometimes they like to fake, you know, they do these little long trap fakes. And I thought maybe they could actually maybe swipe a few of the bids and rotate, but they just held the bids and then initiated right before market open. Um, so I, I always take some profit when the major liquidity level gets pulled and then market open, traded a bunch of volume. It was holding the one minute nine. Um, but at this point, there's a couple bearish factors kind of coming into play here. First is just the up only nature, right? Um, we're, we're getting more and more extended. Uh, and also, we're, we're in a market where market open shorts are actually working still, for the most part. Um, and I'm also quite bearish when stocks make aggressive pushes right before market open. This is actually a bearish factor when a stock is aggressively pushing with higher lows into market open, right? Because um, a lot of times they abuse the market open volume to dump the stock. Um, that being said, they were they were putting up a bunch of bids here, so I wanted to hold through the bids. But once these bids got taken out, um, I just got out of the long. You know, you don't want to overstay your welcome. Um, once you know one minute, once one minute twenty bids for the most part start, unless you have an amazing average and it's really you know extent and you're in a good market for it, um, which you're not really in a good market for holding for a uh, eighty percent longs and stuff like that. Um, you know, unless you're really in the right play, but. Uh, um, but you know, once, once, once the major bids start getting taken out on the, um, 
on the book, uh, on the key MAs, I just tend to get out completely. And then, yeah, we've been seeing multiple backside bid props. So a midday bid prop is pretty much characterized by um, A, being in a weaker market where they're working and they have been working. We had three or four bid props last week that all worked. Um, it happens midday, there's higher lows, and it usually takes about, I would say, at least 45 minutes minimum. And this was about 45 minutes from here to here. You know, maybe it was about 40, but it was, it was long enough. But what made this really nice was not just the painted higher lows, which is what the prop is, but they also had a 20, 25K ass, which don't show up on my book because they were not on DXF feed, but I saw them on my level two. Um, there's like 20, 25K ask holding this down. And what's really common for a bid prop is they push it into those asks. They start filling the ask. The stock, the stock stalls. There's usually not a lot of bids following this up. And they pull it. And this is where um, the 250 swipe here is where the um, 1 minute 200 was. And since my average was like low 270s, I just treated this as like a 20 cent scalp. Even though now it's at 220s right now because they did another move, which I didn't short, but um, they did this support swipe into uh, high relative volume initiation. And then they did like the fake breakout and pull, right? Um, which is really interesting. On this candle, I pointed out that they actually swiped 2.5 and then put like 35,000 shares on the bid and it forced the stock up. Um, but it was a lot of the same bear stuff where there's no bid follow up and they did a little, you know, long, you know, second leg up here. Um, and then they pulled the stock and it faded, right? So uh, we'll go over the thinkorswim chart really fast. Just looking at pre-market volume, you see 400k a minute. It's incre very consistent. It's increasing, making new highs. Only thing up today. So that's the bullish factor. And here's the walk down. Right, so as this was getting walked down, I told my Discord, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna look at the bids. Here's the one minute 20. Right? I don't want to read bids here, guys, because this is like in between the nine and the 20. And it's usually just best to wait for certain MA levels to get tested first, right? So the one minute 20 is super nice on this. And we'll see on the book um, in the pre market that. This is pre-market here. That's where I went long. So here's the first test at a 1 minute 200. And I really like it. So the bids were kind of thin here. So I, I don't really like longing to the very first. Even though sometimes on crazy Momo place, it will touch the 1 minute 20. Sorry, the 1 minute 20, not the 1 minute 200. And just push it back. I also thought it was interesting that they stacked a really big ask here to force the stock down. And then they pulled the ask. I thought that was potentially bullish not the most amazing signal but can be good with other factors you know added into this um so here's the woman at 20 soak the bids woman at 20 um i usually do like to wait at least I, I i said at least like three to five minutes um but here i went long because you can start to see them restack the bids right it's a little thin here it comes to touch the bids and they start to restack I go long, I add a little bit to the long, um, it starts to push, and now these bids become uh, my risk. You know, a lot of times you, you, you do get these pops, you get these initial pops with not a lot of bid follow-up. It comes back down to the bids, which is why it's important to have good averages, right? Um, and I saw it get walked down to the bids, I'm like, oh man, I'm gonna, if it starts to eat through these like 250, 253, 250, and starts, you know, getting to the point where the one minute 20 might crack i'm just gonna you know try to um just get out as fast as i can luckily it touched a bit and instantly rocketed and this is why i take it a little bit off because on these aggressive moves there's not a lot of bid follow-up now that doesn't mean bids can't come in later in this case bids absolutely came in later um which if you're shorting this as a potential long trap i don't blame you but there is that risk you know i thought these bullish factors you know, I used to just short every single one of these aggressive pops towards high a day. Um, but I realized that a lot of times the structure, you know, the consistent increasing volume, the 1 minute 20 pullback, the bid soaking, um, 
this was enough of a bullish factor to make me think that shorting, you know, selling some of my longs is a good idea, but going short is not as good of an idea, which is why I said my Discord, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm thinking that high day is going to get broken here. Um, so a lot of times the structure leading up to the push can influence your bias of, should I go short here? Should I look for the, or if I'm long, should I hold on to my long? Um, and then you can see the bids coming in. Here's that little $3 push that faked people out, $3 push. And then look, they started big stacking the bids, big second, and then they initiated right before market open. Um, I thought at market open, there were a lot of bids on this thing. So I was like, oh, it'll probably keep pushing, which is why I kept holding. Um, but now we're getting pretty extended, start to take some profit on the high day swipes. Um, also we're just in, a, again, we're in a market where, uh, market open, uh, high days are happening. Um, and then this is where I got out is when these bids started to get taken out over here. So these are the one minute, 20 bids after the stock already pushed, right? And then you can see it getting taken out here. The one minute, 20 bids getting eaten, sold into, um, yeah, we'll focus on this. this. Was the same thing NVFY did right here, which is where they um, they had this like three dollar painted level, and here's that last push. There's no bid, you know, there's bids down here, but there's no bids on the actual push, which on backside could be very bearish. You can see them stack the ass, all these ass starting in stacked. They started eating through them, eating through them, and they pulled the stock. Right, it's the same thing that happened on NVFY. Um, Shannon anticipate, you know, I. Uh, in my weekly, my weekend review, I, I said on my Discord, you know, I think a big thing we need to, you know, kind of factor into our trades is you see these little patterns repeat themselves on like a two or three day basis. It was about a two or three day time frame where a lot of the same either short squeeze patterns or the same backside patterns um, tend to repeat themselves, right? And this is one this back to back repetition of the same pattern um from nvfy had that painted four dollar level that also had like a third push that ate through bid ate through ask with no bid follow up and pulled same thing happened here um and here's that bid prop here's like the 25 30k ass they were filling here's the prop they initiated it there's really not a lot of bids following this up at all if, and and also they pulled the one bid down here at the top of this push that could be very bearish um and i just went in on the 270s and got out at 250 i just traded that move um and then yeah here's that here's that move where they you can't see it on the book here but they threw up a 35k bid shoved it up gave a second leg up pulled the stock and then, you know it's just fading so um you know when my average is this low i tend to just take the scout move Right, the MA that I, you know, you know, I expected 2.5 slash 1 minute 200 to provide some support. Um, and my average is low 270s, so you know, sometimes it's just best to take that move. But it's not bad, you know, not a bad little. Uh, it's a clean pattern, and the bid prop has been working last week and this week. So if, if the if the market is saying this pattern's working, you might as well trade that pattern, right? So, um, anyways, that's it for today. Kind of a shorter video. Made it midday. I assume this is just kind of fading. Not really expecting anything else from this play. Um, and yeah, and you know, uh, market open short, you know, we're still getting the one minute 20 Momo in the pre-market and market open. So, if, you know, if you get the right structure with the right volume, um, you know, early on, you know, as long as we're getting second legs up like this, right? Here's the first leg, high volume pullback, bids on a one minute 20. Um, might as well take the long, but not seeing a crazy amount of continuation, right? Um, by the way, we also saw a one minute. God, what, what was that ticker? On here. No, not here. On here. XLB, also same thing. About very, like, an increasing volume. You know, went from five, like 300K to 600K to 800K. Quick bull back to the one minute 20, even though these bids weren't as thick. I should have just longed it straight up. You know, I was like, I saw this rotation here when four, four or five and four ten started getting broken. I was like, should I just chase here with, you know, smaller size and see if it goes? And I thought maybe they might long trap it. I thought they might push 4.5 and, and, and pull it. 
but they it just ended up going straight up for a high day clear out and then pulling. So didn't get the high day clear out. Uh, didn't catch for the long, <laughs> so I didn't trade this at all. But yeah, one minute. This is big increase in volume comes in. Volume's the most important factor, right? 800k, pretty significant. Um, and also at this point, the stock was only up. This was 2.8, and this long was at 3.9. You know, that's uh, it's not too overextended. Um, has room to make another leg up. Quick pullback to 1 minute 20. Caught these bids. There wasn't a lot of bids there, but there were some. And yeah, just rotated straight up. Nice um, nice 20% up only move right there. The high day. Um, and then, you know, obviously the 35% uh, <laughs> uh, fade. So, but yeah, nice 1 minute 20 Momo. 1 minute 20 Momo is working, especially earlier in the move. Stock's not too extended. Um, so that's the long, and then... You know, we're seeing, we're seeing, sh you know, stocks fade um, relatively early into their pushes, right? You might get a, after the second or third legs up, we're getting, we're getting fades. So, um, this type of market we're in, bid props, no bid prop here, but there are bid props on uh, other trades. And yeah, that's about it. So, um, that'll be it for today, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.